Welcome back to another video. This week I am tackling what I think is the best Imperial Guard kit Games Workshop have ever made. And that is, of course, the brand new Field Ordnance Batteries. This is basically the love child of a Basilisk and a Heavy Weapons team, so I love it. The guns themselves went together super easily, a little bit fiddly in a few places, as is to be expected from modern Games Workshop kits, but all in all, quite a quick build. I wanted to use this texture paste, so I decided to not put the guns on the bases immediately. I initially wasn't sure about the new scale of the Cadian kits and the Imperial Guard in general when they announced it on Warhammer Community, but now I have them in my hands, I have to say, they work, they're just better, they still fit in with the old models and they still look human next to Space Marines. I of course had to go with the new field guns, the Bombasts, because they just reminded me of the Napoleonic Wars with those cavalry guns, and they do look a lot like British 25 pounders from the Second World War. Let's meet the crew. Guy with shell, sergeant saying stop, guy covering his ears, sergeant saying shoot that one please. It's a cool crew. And then I added the texture paste. Texture paste on, I made it look like the guns had been pushed into position by running them through the mud. They have really nice indented tyres, so it means that a nice track is left behind. With all the crew gathered around, it's not going to be too visible, but you know, you and I know it's there. That's the building done, for now. Let's get on to the painting. After spraying them black with a rattle can, I used Panzer Grey through my airbrush as a zenithal highlight. I already have tanks in these colours, so I wanted the infantry slash field guns to match. I then went in for a further zenithal highlight with a mix of Panzer Grey and a brighter silver colour. Then before we do anything else, we need to base coat every other colour on all the models. Metallics are simple, anything looks metallic. Blacks, I did all of the fatigues and actually nothing on the guns because there was nothing that required it. To break up all that black and grey, I went in with Rhinox Hide for a nice brown rich leather. I don't want to know how many cows or space equivalent of cows had to die to outfit the entire regiment slash most of the Imperial Guard. Using the same brown, we're going to do our first round of chipping. I use chipping a lot, it's in most of my videos, so I'm not going to cover it too much here, but essentially, take most of it off, use a sponge. Now doing the exact same thing with Dawnstone. This makes it look like layers of paint to come off, with the brown being the primer and the Dawnstone being chipped paint. I then painted all the skin on all the crew's faces. Variety is good, so I painted loads of different skin tones. I decided to paint the Sergeant's chevrons with blue as a nod back to the Napoleonic Wars where artillerymen in the British Army wore blue. So I'm going to keep this as a running theme throughout my army. Infantry sergeants will have red chevrons, artillery and engineers will have blue. I think it's pretty cool. To all of the skin, I gave an all over wash of Reichland flesh shade. I base coated the goggle lenses with the fang, which is a nice washed out blue. I then base coated all the screens and dials in a nice vibrant green, just to add a bit of a spot colour to this army. It's very drab at the moment. I also used some greens and reds to make the sergeant's radio pouch look cool. Then it was time to highlight all of the infantry models using Dawnstone. I decided to go for edge highlighting to give it a bit of a crisp look because we're going to be adding a lot of weathering later, so this will help them stand out from all that background mud. The details on these models are really sharp, so edge highlighting was actually a really enjoyable exercise this time. Then using Mornfang Brown, I did a messy highlight all over the leather. You don't need to be as neat with leather because it has loads of shifting tones, and if you look at it closely, it's full of scratches and stuff anyway, so easy to highlight. Then coming in with some field blue, which is a rough equivalent of Thunderhawk blue from Citadel, I highlighted all the fatigues. Now the reason I used a blue rather than a grey to highlight the fatigues was to give it some visual differentiation from the armour, which is grey that's highlighted grey. This just adds a lot of contrast and stops the model looking really boring. Once again, edge highlighting was really fun and really satisfying. They've added just enough folds to make edge highlighting rewarding on the fatigues, but not difficult. It's a fine balance, well done. One thing I was noticing throughout is the amount of character in these infantry models. The sergeant glancing at his watch as he tells the gun to cease fire or stand by to fire. The one gunner covering his ears as the weapon fires is just an excellent bit of humanity that we don't get to see too often because it's full of demons and superhumans. 
Another one here is the sergeant with her foot up on the box pointing at a new target with her hand to her radio as she receives new orders or new priority targets. It's just excellent. But enough of that, back to the hobby. Using an enamel paint now, in this case a handy dandy little bottle from Tamiya, which is panel liner black, I added shadow all over the models. This is really easy to do and I use it for my white scars and it's just such a great way to add contrast with very little effort. If you want it to be clean, make sure you gloss varnish beforehand. I don't care in this case, it's a battle damaged gun, so get messy. Now the final thing on the guns before weathering is to add my transfers so I can add weathering over the top. I also painted all the loose shells with Rune Lord Brass, which is an excellent colour, being brass, for brass. I also painted Shellman's shell that he's carrying. I presume it's his friend. Now earlier, whilst I was blathering on about how great this sculpt is and how great the miniatures are, I base coated these boxes with Wildwood. Now I'm coming in with Mornfang Brown to add some wood grain to the top. And the next stage of that is to add in some Xandry Dust and do the exact same thing again. And that's the boxes done. I'm actually really quite pleased how these boxes turned out for such minimal effort. Wildwood, Mornfang Brown on a sharp brush, same again with Andrew Dust, right over top. Easy. Off camera, I spray painted these brown with something from Plasticoat, which is a brand I found in Hobbycraft, just called Brown. It works, it is brown. I then super glued the guns to their bases. Once I was sure that the guns were completely secure, hey, that rhymed. Nice. I added the crews to the rest of the open space around the base. That rhymed too, both were accidents. Adding the crew to the base now really made the guns start to look complete and I got quite excited. There's only a few steps left before these guns look like the monsters they're supposed to and this is a big one. Next, to blend the guns into the ground, I added a mix of some texture paste and some random brown paint I had lying around. It's just a cheap squeezy tube of paint, which is excellent for this application. Originally, I was using it just to blend the feet of the gun in, but then I decided to add it to the feet of the guardsman and also splodge it around in a few random patterns all around the base, near the boxes and the like. And then the mud looks a bit more interesting, a bit more tuto. I also made sure to cover the wheels completely. This gun's been rolled forward in the muck. It's gonna be absolutely covered in the stuff. Next on to a bit more weathering, a tried and true method of using Agaros Dunes contrast paint and dragging it gently over the transfers and down any flat surfaces to look like rain residue. I then used Agrax Earthshade and Druki Violet in turn on the end of the barrels to make them look a bit burned. Next, whilst I was waiting for the guns to dry ready for their second round of weathering, I cleaned up the base rooms. There's nothing left to paint on the bases, so this is as good a time as any. Next, I came in with a bright silver highlight for the edges of the main gun. This is great for vehicles, especially in conjunction with chipping as it makes them look heavy and, well, as realistic as I can make it. I was going to say as realistic as possible, but... I've seen Night Shift. Next, back to enamels, we're using some earth effects to add a patina to the bottom of the weapon. Am I using that word right? I also use this as another layer for the Guardsman's boots. Using a dabbing motion, I added a bit of splatter further up as well, just to make it look more combined. Using some black pigment, I added some soot at the end of the barrels. I was quite excited to do this, but I don't know if the end result actually means we can see it at all. Now using some more enamels, a streaking grime for Panzer Grey, which is perfect because that was our base coat. I applied this fairly generously across the face shield and a few areas of the gun and carriage. Once that was applied, I took most of the paint off the brush and came back in and used a streaking motion, because it's streaking grime, to drag it down the weapon. You'll notice now there's a lot more layers and intricacy in the details, which didn't require that much effort. Getting near the end now, using one of our final enamels, we used dust effects. I used this very lightly in just a few areas. Basically, this is more very dry, crusty mud left in some of the recesses, so we don't need much. 
Moving on to Rust, we're also going to add this very lightly in a few areas. It's very important not to get carried away with Rust on active vehicles like this. These aren't hulks, these are weapons of war that are being maintained and are being used. With this in mind, I added this only to areas with bare metal or areas that aren't integral to the function of the gun. I thought the bases were looking a tiny bit bare and they could definitely use some sandbags. These are resin and they're from March of War, link below in the description. I just sprayed them with Zandri dust, threw some Agrax on, good to go. They were safely super glued to the base, I had to make sure they were blended with the base and the scene, so I did the exact same thing I did when I pushed the gun onto the bases. That is, add mud in the form of texture paste and also some enamels afterwards. Point to note about enamels, you can't clean your brush with water afterwards and you can't wipe them off with water. You have to use mineral spirits, but goodness me, are they worth it. Now, I was really inspired by the guy who's covering his ears, so I decided to 3D print some muzzle flash. This will really help me sell the model as my own. I also printed off some smoke that I put on the weapon that's just been told to cease firing. Now, after priming, I painted this muzzle flash with yellow, and we're going to come back to that in just a second. But in between, because I love doing things out of order, I covered this in Basilicanum Grey for a nice smoky effect. Back to our muzzle flash, I decided to use contrast paints, yellow, then orange, then red, and then go back into the deepest areas with the brightest colour, because that's how flame works. As I added more and more layers, I realised I really wasn't liking where this was going. It was just looking like some weird Christmas tree. Now it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to basically finish painting an entire section of a model and decide you don't like it. I got to this point where I was adding Screaming Skull into the recesses where I thought it looked crap. So I let it dry, I took it outside and sprayed it with Wraithbone and started again with a different method. That method, the one I should have been using the entire time, is dry brushing. Well actually the first couple of layers were an overbrush but give me a break. I basically went through similar colours, bright yellow all the way through to a fairly bright red and then a tiny bit of black to add a sooty atmosphere to the outside which helps sell it as smoke. And I could tell from the get-go as I worked through the stages that this was a much better attempt at a muzzle flash. To the point I'm actually really pleased with it and it's what I envisioned in my head when I started this project. I also added similar colours starting at the darkest moving through to the brightest in this situation on the barrel to make it look like object source lighting, a flash from the barrel. Once the barrel's done, I glued the muzzle flash and the weapon together, and I couldn't be happier with the result. I had an absolute blast painting these. If you want to see more about weathering vehicles, there's a link in the top right hand corner. You know, if YouTube actually decides to put it there. Anyway, that'll do it for this week. This is my favourite Imperial Guard kit ever. I've been Sam. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time.